What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. I was just thinking, uh, I haven't done a review or talked about the Explorer in a little while. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've had the vehicle for five years, so this will be the five year review. It's a 2016, I got this in the beginning of 2016 in like January. I bought it brand new, so I was the first owner. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, why I love this vehicle so much and what I think, what I don't like. So, something I really do like with this vehicle is the EcoBoost. I know a lot of people um, don't like the EcoBoost. They don't like how Ford's getting away from uh, V8s. But honestly, every manufacturer's getting rid of V8s. Um, Ford was kind of just the one that pioneered it and uh, made it a lot more efficient, a lot more powerful, a lot better. So everybody's kind of getting on board with that. Um, a lot of brands, even even the uh, Grand Cherokee that we have over there, um, it's not even a V8. They got rid of the V8 uh, a couple years ago. And honestly, these V6s with turbos on them and stuff, much faster, much more fuel efficient. So it kind of encompasses the best of both worlds so i really love the eco boost as far as what the explorer comes with now now all you diehard fanboys i don't want to offend anybody or trigger anybody because when i talk about these two vehicles they're technically not in the same class even though they're the same size, same towing capacity, uh, roughly the same engine, I would consider them in the same class. The rest of the world doesn't because the Explorer is a third row seated vehicle. It's an SUV with third row seating. Um, the Grand Cherokee doesn't have third row seating. So when compared to other models, the Explorer is compared to a Durango. Now a Durango to me is on a different level than the Explorer. Um, not only with towing capacity, but performance models, like they have the SRT. Um, so like I said, even though people like to compare them, I don't. I would compare it to something like the Grand Cherokee. Now, um, another thing I love about this vehicle is once I tuned it, it really opened up. Um, tuning it, I have a stage three Livernoy kit on it. Tuning it made it run the way I feel it should have ran from the beginning. That's, uh, looking for a flathead screwdriver. And when it did, a lot of people doubted me because I was, all the, all the, the stuff I put on it, put the crank horsepower at a little over 500 it produces 425 foot pounds of torque at the wheels and a lot of people were just like blah 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 bullshit you can't do that it doesn't doesn't work that way and i'm like no i'm telling you it's true believe it or not and then check out my racing videos i took this thing to uh cecil county dragway for a youtube event and I beat an SRT Durango, which is rated at 475 horsepower. So, I was super excited. <clears throat> That's one of the biggest accomplishments that I've had for this thing. And it really surprised me. Like, uh, I had faith in it, but uh, it really got up, got out there. Even the, the guy driving the Durango SRT, he said, that thing's quick. He said there was no catching me once once I started to take off there was no catching me. So another thing I want to talk about is reliability. I've got 87,000 miles on this vehicle. I've never replaced anything. Um, a lot of people talk about like the turbos and you'll be replacing them this and that. If you think that's the case Watch the vehicle, watch the video that I watched to get this vehicle. 
Somebody told me about it where I used to work, so I looked it up. It's called the EcoBoost Torture Test. I watched that vehicle, and they put that, that motor through things that you or I will never do in a lifetime to a vehicle. So for me, that was pretty impressive. And that's what made me buy the vehicle. Now, the new ones are even better. Not only with a better tuned EcoBoost, but with the 10 speed. 10 speed is amazing. So, another thing that I like about this vehicle, I'm gonna flip the camera around here. <coughs> is amenities. Um, now, this is the Sync 2. So little things like the backup camera. When you turn the wheel on the Sync 2, the back backup camera doesn't pivot like in the Sync 3 and all the newer models. Um, they switch that over to 2018. So all the newer models come with the Sync 3 um, and then it'll just get better from there. But it's a really awesome system. I really can't complain. The video for the backup camera is high def. Um, I could show you the differences when I do another video about the Grand Cherokee, but the Grand Cherokee's camera is crap. You're looking at like 480p versus this, which is like 720 or 1080p. It's really nice. Another thing I love about this vehicle is the front camera. Not a lot of vehicles have a front camera. So for me, it's also got a wide angle front camera. So you could see that way if there was little kids. Um, for me in the beginning, I was just like, what the hell do you even need that for? I can see over the front hood of my vehicle. At the beginning, I was basically like, those would be really good for, for situations where like the driver might be a little smaller. I um, uh, hope I don't offend anybody because females are smaller, but like if you're a female or a small male where maybe you couldn't see over the front uh, of the hood of the vehicle, I could see where the front camera would be beneficial. So in the beginning, I didn't use it a lot. So now fast forward five years later, I use it all the time. <clears throat> There's a lot of scenarios where like you're pulling into something like a park and as soon as you crest the um, parking lot, it kind of goes down. Doesn't matter how tall you are, you can't see in front of your vehicle. So popping that front camera on, especially when there's kids around, it's just one of those things like, wow, you're, you're glad that you have it when you need it. So that's another thing I love. I, I really don't have too many complaints about this vehicle. Uh, I did make a video about things I hate and like about this vehicle. A lot of those hates have kind of gone away. Um, this vehicle comes with a hitch right from the factory. I got the, the model with the, uh, the dual panel, uh, sunroof, moonroof. I got the heated and ventilated seats. Those ventilated seats are, are really, really nice on a long trip. You don't realize like that you're like uncomfortability while you're sitting for long periods of time, um, can be eased just by getting some air through the seat up into like your lower back and stuff like that. Uh, I call it the crack attack <laughs> because uh, it cures swamp ass from when you're driving long distances. But drove this thing all the way to uh, Illinois to get tank. It was, uh, what, eight hours, one direction. And uh, this thing was just an amazing road trip vehicle. And then uh, just everything. It comes with uh, the bliss for, like, uh, your lane departure warning system folding mirrors uh this vehicle if you didn't know because i get a lot of comments about people who have uh, platinums or even xlts <clears throat> with the ecoboost and they're like well mine's the same thing i don't know why you're paying extra for the sport if you've never owned one you would you would not know that your vehicle is actually not the same thing this vehicle's raked which means the front is lower than the back. Uh, your acceleration transfer of the weight is that much more ahead of any other vehicle that doesn't have it, like the Platinum. Um, they might have the same powertrain, but then you look at the numbers and you're wondering why this vehicle, by car lengths, like multiple car lengths, are 
this vehicle is beating that vehicle. Nobody can figure it out. It also has torsion bars underneath the vehicle to prevent um, extreme rollover in um, high-speed corner situations. That's why the police switch police use the, these vehicles. Um, they're amazing handling vehicles. I can't complain about them at all as far as handling. I did upgrade the brakes. Uh, this vehicle now is equipped with uh, drilled and slotted rotors. Um, the tires on here, the, 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 the stock tires didn't last that long. They lasted like 20,000 miles. But these dual lower lens of pluses, um, with the Y speed rating, um, they just handle amazingly. They're rated for 80,000 miles. Um, typically, I get 50 to 55,000 miles out of them. And then uh, they give you a discount on your next set of tires. So that's another thing. Um, <laughs> another pro and con. I talked about this before. It's a blessing and a curse. Because this vehicle resembles a police vehicle, um, people either think you're a cop and get out of your way or they think you're a cop and they drive the speed limit. So if you're on a two-lane road in the middle of nowhere or you're trying to get to some road um, with the ability to pass somebody, those cars will drive the speed limit until you can get to an open area where you can go around them. Um, it's crazy. But on the highway, like it's, you'll pull up on somebody, somebody will get out of your way, you'll drive through and then they'll get right behind you. Like everybody lets you through um, just because they think you're a cop. Now, Pennsylvania switched over. Um, they used to have the white Explorers when they had this model. Now they have gray ones. Um, really doesn't matter, though. Everybody around here recognizes the Explorer. So they immediately play it safe, and uh, they just move out of your way. So it's it's a really good thing. So that's, uh, that's it, guys. Now, you know, you may be wondering why all of a sudden I'm, you know, talking about the Explorer again. Well, that's because I sold it. I ended up selling this vehicle. Um, it'll be picked up today. So I just wanted to kind of talk about the vehicle um, before it goes. It's been uh, my bread and butter, my, my rock, my hard place. It's never let me down. Um, when I was going through a divorce, I've actually lived in the thing for a little bit, uh, jumping from hotel to hotel, sleeping in parking lots when I was trying to save some money. So there was like, there was a period of time where me and this thing were really close. And uh, I'm sad to see it go. It's just one of those things where, you know, it's not really necessary right now. So I got bigger and better things planned. And uh, I'll bring you along on that ride when I finally do uh, choose another vehicle uh, in the near future. So, like I said, I got bigger and better things planned. So this thing is on its journey to another owner. And uh, it'll treat them just as good as it, they, I, it's treated me. As long as they take care of it. Um, <laughs> if the new owner gets it, never changes the oil, doesn't rotate the tires, um, drives it like they stole it, they end up breaking it. And, you know, They have a bunch of malfunctions. They can curse me up and down, but it's, you know, I've raced it. I drove it you know, 155 miles an hour um, just to see how fast it would go. And uh, it's never let me down. It's always uh, kept me safe, kept my family safe. Um, it's a remarkable piece of uh, engineering. It's a remarkable machine, and, and I love it. I'm not even a Ford fan, but this vehicle I love and uh, will love. Um, the new ST, I, I, would, get, I would get one tomorrow. Um, if I didn't have other plans, I would get an ST tomorrow. So um, with the baby, now, you know, three kids need something a little different so uh we do have another mustang in the future um i'm looking at something even better than the 800 horsepower supercharged mustang that i had so um stay tuned for that so until uh we meet again the next time uh you know we get on the channel here i'll be talking about these other two vehicles i do have some uh more product reviews planned for this week uh we'll get to them but uh, as far as car videos, the next thing I'll be doing is talking about the things I like and hate about the uh, Grand Cherokee. And then the things I like and hate about the Beast back there. The big uh, Cummins diesel. So this is Josh from the 570. Leave your comments in the comments section below. Um, I probably won't be talking about who and who I sold the car to and, and what I sold it for. Just because I pay child support. So um, that's none of their business how much um, I'm 
selling a vehicle for. Um, they are vultures. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. But thank you guys for uh, stopping by, and we'll see you next time.